In this video, we're going to continue solving homogeneous linear constant coefficient systems of differential equations, uh, but this time we're going to look at these systems that have complex eigenvalues. Um, so I'll take you through the steps again. The first step is the same as the last one, where you want your differential equation in the form x prime equals a times the vector x. Um, and you want it in this form so you have that matrix A. The second part is to find the eigenvalues and vectors. Actually in this time because it's complex you only need one of the vectors but I'll explain that in a minute. So you find the eigenvalues and eigenvector um, of A um, and then what you want to do is take the VE to the lambda T. Now notice right now this is not the solution. I'm going to say that again. This is not the solution. Vector e to the, now the eigenvalue is complex, so let me write that as a plus b times i. So let's just say we got a number a and number b in there, times t. So I can use exponential multiplication here, and it would be e to the a, and then a t times e to the b t times i. And then I can use Euler's formula to write that last bit with the imaginary number in the exponent as cosine of b t plus i sine of b t. All right, now your vector is the vector you found and the lambda is that eigenvalue. And now what you want to do is put this, you want to multiply this out and put this in the form where you get some vector of all the real parts of this, so nothing with imaginary part or with imaginary numbers. Factor out the i and then get some other vector, and we're going to call this the um, imaginary. So y sub real and y sub imaginary are just vectors. They're not going to have imaginary numbers in them because the i is factored out right there. Um, let me do just a little bit of explanation in here so this all makes sense. Here to here I used Euler's formula. And that will be the same every time, except for that you'll have a different number for b. Um, and then from here to here what you're doing is multiplying everything out. So you're really multiplying that vector and everything else out together and separating. So separating it into real and imaginary parts. Um, so the solution, so none of this work had to do with the solution yet. The solution to this is a linear combination, so C1 times whatever you get for that real part of the vector plus C2 times whatever you get for the imaginary part. No imaginary numbers in there. Notice there's no I in there out in front of it. Um, that I goes away with the solution. Um, it did before as well when we dealt with complex roots um, for like second order differential equations. All right, and then the rest of this follows just like it did before where you want to apply initial conditions if you have them. Apply initial conditions to find C1 and C2, and then lastly, um, I'll probably have you uh, put the solution in one vector. So not separate it out into its real and imaginary parts. Okay, let's do an example. Uh, so 
let's solve x prime equal to negative 2, 3, negative 3, negative 2 times x, where x of 0 is equal to negative 1, 1. Okay, the determinant of a minus lambda i, so I have to subtract lambda from the diagonals first, so it's a negative 2 minus lambda right there. Find the determinant, so I'm going to multiply this all out. Uh, I've got a negative lambda times negative lambda, that's lambda squared. I have a negative lambda times negative 2, that's positive 2. It looks like that happens twice, so that's plus a 4 lambda. Then I've got a negative 2 times a negative 2, so that's 4. And then on the other diagonal, I have a negative 9, but I need to subtract that. Let me think about this one again. I've got 4 minus a negative 9. So I do believe that's going to be 13. That is not factorable. So lambda is going to be uh, negative b, which is 4, plus or minus the square root 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 13, all over 2 times a, which is 1. So this is negative 2 plus or minus this 1, 4, and this 4 will both, um, if I factor those out, will cancel with that 2, because uh, square root of 4 is 2, and that leaves me with 4 minus 13, which is negative 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So I've got 3i. All right, now remember with these complex eigenvalues, all you need is one of the eigenvectors. So, I'm going to do this for negative 2 plus 3i. And so plug that back into a minus lambda i right up above it. So I've got negative, I'm looking at this vector, this uh, matrix right here. So I've got negative 2 minus negative 2, so that's 0, and then I'm subtracting lambda, so I'd have a negative 3i. 3, negative 3, and then negative 2 minus a negative 2 goes away, and I've got a minus 3i. Alright, times xy, that's an i right there, equals 0. So negative 3i plus, or x, plus 3y equals 0, and negative 3x minus 3i times y has to equal 0. And if I look at that top equation, I would pick x to be 1 and y to be i. And I can use that as my vector. I'm going to double check it here. So this is my check. I'll put it in blue. I just, I've done so much work so far, I want to make sure that I have the right eigenvector, and if it checks with this second equation, I'm, I'm good. Um, so 3 times that x minus 3i times another i. i times i is negative 1, that makes that a positive 3 and a negative 3, and sure enough, that equals 0. Sweet. Good to go. All right, so now, for the solution, I'm just going to use v e to the lambda t. Now, by the way, I'm sorry, I said something that I probably shouldn't have just then. I said the solution. We're not there yet. This is all just lead up work. All right, the vector is 1i. Then I've got e2, the negative 2 plus 3i. So negative 2 plus 3i times t. So this is 1i, and then I've got e to the negative 2t, and I've got an e to the 3it, which if I use Euler's formula is cosine of 3t plus i sine 
of 3t. All right, so now what I want to do is separate this. And what I usually do, because I know I want one real vector plus i times some other vector, so I leave myself a bunch of room in those parentheses. Now I'm going to go through everything that's on the top here. So I'm looking at 1 times this e to the negative 2t cosine sine. So I've got 1 times cosine, now that's real, so it's going to go over here. And then I've got this 1 times i sine. So it's going to go over here with this imaginary part, but I'm going to factor out that i, and so what's left in the parentheses is sine. All right, now let me do the same thing with the bottom. So I'm going to multiply i all the way through everything. The first thing I have is i times this e times cosine. Oh, I'm sorry. I just let those e's, like, hang out there on the... Let's put them in the top. Alright, so I've got that i times cosine. Now that is imaginary. So it goes over here. Then I've got i times i, which is negative 1, and negative 1 is real, so that's going to go over here in the real part. So i times i, negative 1, so that's going to give me a negative e to the negative 2t sine of 3t. Okay, now I can write my solution. This is the solution, and it's c1 times that first big parentheses, that first vector, e to the 2t cosine of 3t, negative e to the negative 2t sine of 3t, plus c2 times this second vector. Don't worry about the imaginary part. We don't want imaginary solutions. And this part that is the imaginary part with no imaginary numbers actually gives us a solution that's in the fundamental set of solutions to this system of differential equations. Okay, I was talking while I was writing. Did I get all that down? I think so. All right, so there is the general solution. And now we need to apply the initial conditions. So x at 0 is going to be c1 times, now I've got e to the 0 is 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. e to the 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. Plus c2 times sine of 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. This is equal to negative 1, 1. So it looks like if you look at everything on the top of this, on the top we've got c1 and 1 and negative 1, c2 is multiplied by 0, and then on the bottom we've got c2 and 1 and 1. So it looks like c2 is going to equal 1 and c1 is going to equal negative 1. And I know those are the same numbers that are up above, but that's coincidental. It's not, that doesn't always happen. All right, so let's write this all out as one vector now. So I'm going to be a little bit lazy here. We have an e to the negative 2t in all of these terms. I'm going to put that outside so I don't have to write it four different times. Now c1 is negative, so that would make a negative cosine in the top there and a negative times a negative, sine of 3t. Notice there's a negative right there, so negative times negative is, makes that sign positive. Um, and then c2 is positive, so or positive 1, so that's going to be sine of 3t, cosine of 3t. And there is my solution written out as one vector here. All right, um, and I just want to say this does get a little bit more complicated when it's not just a single imaginary number. When you have a real and imaginary, you do the exact same thing. You multiply out, you're just going to have a lot more terms in these two vectors, in the real and the imaginary vector.